Now, what I am going to discuss in the next uh, hour or so is basically investigations in respiratory diseases. The common uh, investigations uh, which are specialized to pulmonary medicine, one is invasive is bronchoscopy, second is lung function and now the third is a polysomnography that is the sleep studies which are done for sleep apnea. So along with the studies, not only the technical aspect, I will discuss you with you the clinical aspects or as well. So now there are a spectrum of bronchoscopic procedures which are done. <coughs> You know, you can do washing, uh, brushings, biopsies, needle aspirations. What it means, I'll show it to you uh, with some uh, illustrations and videos as we go ahead. Now, tuberculosis is one of the commonest pulmonary uh, diseases in India, as all of us are aware. And you know, it would uh, it's appropriate to actually start the discussion with tuberculosis. Now, the diagnosis of tuberculosis, pulmonary tuberculosis, you make it in two ways. One is if you have a sputum positive for TB, then that is pulmonary tuberculosis. Often we are left with a uh, scenario when you see a uh, radiological opacity which, is, uh, which could be TB or it could be something whatever and then patient has symptoms but the sputum is negative. What do you do at that time? You know 50% may be positive but uh, you can also have negative uh, sputum. In this scenario you want to and some, some people may not be having the cough. You have an x-ray opacity there is no cough. What do you do? You can induce sputum. There are various methods of inducing sputum. You give nebulization with saline. Sometimes you use hypertonic saline. Hypertonic saline will irritate the airways and the patient can cough out. And you send that sample for testing. The idea is to find out sputum for AFB. Now we have to go one step further. One step further is why do you need AFB? Why do you need the sample? Because we are dealing a lot with drug resistant tuberculosis at present. And to treat a drug resistant tuberculosis by the current standard of care, we need to have a culture specimen. Once you have a culture specimen, then you can test all the 15 anti-TB drugs or newer drugs and see which of them is working in vitro and then that's the best uh, and then adapt the therapy accordingly. So the bottom line in tuberculosis is we must go after the AFV, we must go after the culture and you'll be surprised that we, I, have, I have patients who have, uh, you know, we typically talk about resistance when people have defaulted treatment, not taken treatment pro properly, they are immunosuppressed, but now we are seeing primary resistance. Patient comes up, first time you do diagnosis, patient doesn't respond to therapy, pa there is no history of tuberculosis in the past and patient eventually has drug resistant tuberculosis. This is an x-ray of potentially of tuberculosis. That we did this paper about 2005, published in the European Respiratory Journal. What we did is we did a bronchoscopic lavage. In patients who are smear negative or who do not cough out sputum, we do a bronchoscopy, we take a washing and then you send it out uh, for AFB smear. You can do TB PCR and find out whether TB is present or not. TB PCR helps in the diagnosis, but eventually will not help you for you to test which medicines are working. I won't go into the details, just want to show you how a, uh, what a lavage uh, looks like. You did a bronchoscopy, you will see bronchoscopies later on also. And then you, you know, uh, in an endoscopy, saline is being installed and you see it's being uh, coming back uh, into the uh, bronchoscope. You see, this is being washed. This is a bronchial segment which is being washed with saline. And how do I decide where to take the sample from? I do a CT scan before the bronchoscopy. I find out which segment is affected. I can go into that segment with the bronchoscope and do a wash and then send this sample for checking. What we found out was combining BAL, that is a bronchial alveolar lavage, smear and along with PCR allows for a rapid diagnosis of tuberculosis in the majority of patients who are smear negative or who do not have sputum production at all. And eventually you also have a sample for culture. So we did this, this study actually got the Swiss TB award. So <coughs> bronchial lavage or bronchial wash, the message is you can do when you do not know whether this is TB or this is cancer or whatever this is, you must send a patient for bronchoscopy, take a lavage sample or biopsies as we will see so as to confirm the diagnosis. A confirmed diagnosis is important to go ahead with specific treatment. The next step after doing a wash, we are going to do talking about bronchial biopsies. There are two types of biopsies. You do an endoscopy. Now we know that the airway, trachea is largest and it narrows down as you go peripherally. Endoscope cannot go until the end. It goes up to the fifth, sixth generation of the bronchi. And when you see that there is any uh, lesion and we take a biopsy, we call it a biopsy end of vision as an endobronchial biopsy. If you cannot see any lesion and you still want to take a lung biopsy, I will show you pass a forcep under x-ray yeah, we do uh, C arm, we see where the forcep is going into the lesion and take a biopsy as a transbronchial biopsy. So to keep it simple, a biopsy and a vision is endobronchial biopsy, a biopsy which is performed from the periphery of the lung is a transbronchial lung biopsy. Just an idea of what sort of forceps are available. Again, 
endobronchial biopsy can be typically for cancer, sarcoidosis, research purposes. Now let me show you what a biopsy looks like, how a biopsy is taken. This is a bronchoscopy which is being done. You see a lesion and then uh, you can take a, yeah, start working. So what we can do is you do a bronchial, we can find out and then send it and then uh, we could confirm a diagnosis of cancer. Why is this? I, why am I showing TB followed by cancer? A lot of our lung cancer patients come to us in the last stage or advanced cancer. A significant number of them have already received anti-TB treatment. Was they see a opacity on the X-ray chest? A common perception is this: uh, you know, uh, symptoms are similar. You have cough, you have weight loss, you have hemoptysis. You can get that in TB. You can get that in cancer. And then eventually, uh, most of them, when you make a final diagnosis, so the thing is, the treatment is delayed. So whenever there is a suspicion of between TB and cancer, if somebody is particularly a smoker and then the uh, x-ray is not very convincing you go for a ct and then decide whether bronchoscopy needs to be done again a 58 year old male who has history of myocardial infarction scattered ronchi at the right base this is the chest x-ray as we are shown in and in this particular patient now uh, there is a lesion which you can see here there was no lesion seen at bronchoscopy so what we can do is during bronchoscopy we can pass this is the bronchoscope which you can see here now Periphery, I cannot see on my endoscopy vision, so I take an X-ray, C arm, which is an IITV. Along with that, I can see this image here, and I can see that my forceps is going into this particular lesion, and then I can take a biopsy. So, <clears throat> whenever there are any opacities on the X-ray or the CT scan, bronchoscopy is a very good tool to get a diagnosis either by a lavage or a biopsy. Again, in this case, it was a cancer. Now, lung cancer, just want to give you a touch about the Indian scenario. We, I know this was one of my first publications 10 years ago, done at Science Hospital presentation. 74% of uh, patients with non-small cell lung cancer were inoperable. Significant number we, uh, which we have shown in this particular paper had received anti-TB treatment before the, biops, uh, before the diagnosis. And in small cell cancer, 75% already had extensive disease. So we are catching only one-fourth patients with cancer which are operable or uh, in small cell cancer have, do not have a, a extended or metastatic disease. Now <coughs> often uh, we, yeah, we will see that you do a CT scan and then somebody says there are lymph nodes in the chest, there are lymph nodes in the mediastinum. Again the common uh, diagnosis which is made is this is must be TB. But now let us bottom down to the three common diagnoses. This what I have shown you here is basically I have to show this is the airway and between the airway and the lung you see this is a lymph node. Again this is a lymph node which is enlarged here. Three common cause, yes in our country TB is the common cause, second is malignancy and third could be sarcoidosis. You know uh, sarcoidosis has been thought to be a diagnosis of the West but that is not true anymore. I will show you some cases also. We get sarcoidosis also in India and uh, we have biopsy diagnosis also. So now the question is when you have a mediastinal lymph node, how do you take a sample of that lymph node? Often these are close to the blood vessels, the CT people will say we cannot put a needle uh, from percutaneously. So what I am going to show you is through the bronchoscope, you pass the endoscope here and then a needle is passed into here or here. You we take a sample 